exciting lightning round session. Great new work was started in 2019. In the next couple of minutes, four leaders in their field of work will pitch their exciting initiatives. I'll just run through the speakers and then the speakers will follow each uh, with their uh, quick pitch on their initiative. The first one up is Michael Schnurle, Director of Open Source Operations at OMF, who will speak about the Open Mobility Foundation. After Michael, Jason Kierstedt, OCA Project Governance Board Member and OASIS Board Member, will speak about the Open Projects uh, Cybersecurity Alliance. And after Jason, Tim Hirsch uh, will speak about the Sharing Economy US Technical Advisory Group, uh, closing up with Brad Jordan, uh, as a technical committee co-chair and OASIS board member speaking about the Cacao playbooks. First of all, Michael, over to you. Hi everyone, my name is Michael Schnerla. I'm the director of open source operations for the Open Mobility Foundation. The transportation world is changing because of new connected vehicle types and ubiquitous personal connectivity through smartphones. It's easier than ever to get around. I'm sure you all have ridden and seen many of these new vehicles shown here. Exponential growth of scooters and other micro mobility modes has happened over the last three years. And we expect this to come back strong as the COVID lockdowns ease. The Open Mobility Foundation helps fill the gap between cities and all of these new modes of transportation. Our digital infrastructure helps cities manage the public space. We build data standards and open source software. Our public-private collaboration and cross-sector relationships help us define a shared vision for mobility. The OMF is a nonprofit foundation that builds free open source digital infrastructure tools to help cities manage their public space. The standards allow cities to oversee all of the docked and dockless shared vehicles in operation and the policies that allow them to operate safely and effectively. Over 25 cities and trans transit agencies are members, as are multiple private companies. We get support from foundations like the Rockefeller Foundation and the Knight Foundation. And we have meetings and code contributions that are, of course, open to the public as well. Part of our work is to gather feedback from the public and private sectors and showcase our work. Here are some scenes from a developer day at CoMotion in Los Angeles and a workshop in Washington, DC. Our core product is the Mobility Data Specification, or MDS. Around 100 cities use the MDS data standard now, and most vehicle operators do too, optimizing operations for everyone. All of our products are built collaboratively and in the open on GitHub, and are supplemented by open forums, calls, meetings, and discussions. This map shows the demand for scooters in the Pitchfork Music Festival, and it helps Chicago enforce a restricted geofence around the event using MDS. Another example from Louisville, Kentucky, shows how some of the MDS data is used for planning road improvements and impacts to those improvements. The purple line here is the road under improvement, and the green lines are all the scooter trips that touched that road over the last year. The OMF is focused on the future as well. One example is starting a broader scope of work around curb management. Curbs can involve delivery vehicles, parking, taxis, ride hailing, bikes, pedestrians, and special events. And digitally managing the space for residents will save time and money and help us all get around easier. Thank you, and you can learn more about the OMF at these links. Uh, thanks, Michael. Um, I'm gonna now uh, spend a few minutes talking about uh, an exciting new Oasis Open project that I've been a part of called the Open Cybersecurity Alliance. trying to move the slides forward there there we go um a, a brief recap on what the open Cybersecurity alliance is and what our mission is um we were founded in third quarter last year 
um, with the mission of promoting and supporting um, open interoperability in cybersecurity. And we're doing that by creating a, an open cybersecurity ecosystem comprised of open source tooling, code, and standards that will enable cybersecurity operations products to exchange information more freely and easily, um, allowing uh, operators and consumers of those products to extract better insights, be able to manage their data better, and eventually be able to secure their enterprises, their customers, um, their countries, and other entities in a more robust way than when they're operating their tools in data silos that do not effectively share information. Um, we're a group of global like-minded vendors, end users, and NGOs. So it's not just a, a, a group of, um, of vendors that are stakeholders in the OCA. Um, we're also uh, a number of other entities as well. And we've seen uh, an exciting amount of increased engagement from when we initially launched the OCA in third quarter last year, we, we've grown from 18 members to 26 members. So you can see how rapidly um, this, this uh, work is resonating with the marketplace. Um, a couple of interesting news and updates of what we've been working on over the past few months. In February, we announced the formation of our technical steering committee. Um, that includes leaders from AT&T, IBM, McAfee, Packet, Packet Clearinghouse, and Tripwire. Uh, the mission of the technical steering committee is to steer and guide all of the work in the open source projects and manage the long-term viability and direction of those projects. As well, in February, we formally launched the OpenDXL ontology project, which is, aims to create this, this standardized ontology for cybersecurity information that will enable the mission of the OCA. Uh, just last month in April, um, we formed a new reference architecture working group. And the goal of that group is to liaise with external groups such as ANISA and IACD, um, and the US federal government, et cetera, who are working in parallel tracks to the OCA um, to enable us to collaborate with those groups and hopefully align our reference architecture with work that's going on inside these other initiatives. And just a, a little tidbit on the activity of the projects. Um, we've had thus far over 380 different commits and the projects have been forked over 79 times and started 126 times on GitHub already. Um, if all of this sounds interesting to you, how can you get involved with the work that's going on in the OCA? Uh, we encourage folks to ask questions, join and engage on our Slack instance. There's a link at opencybersecurityalliance.org. Uh, it's freely available for anyone to join. Um, as with any OASIS open project, you do not actually have to be an OASIS member to participate and get involved in the work at the OCA. So we encourage everyone to get involved. Um, another way you can help with the mission is to advocate for this idea of truly open security interoperability uh, whenever applicable inside your organization and elsewhere. And finally, you know, if if this whole notion is uh, something that resonates with you, and it's it's hard to imagine an organization where cybersecurity is not top of mind nowadays, um, you know, we encourage you to get involved, both consuming and contributing to the projects. Um, we were actively looking for um, people to give us input on what already exists, as well as give us suggestions and possibly contribute to um, developing new connectors and work through some of the interesting work that we're doing developing the schemas in the ontology. And with that, I'm, I'll hand it over to the next presenter. Thanks. Hi, everyone. I um, hope you can hear me. My name is uh, Tim Hirsch. I am the chair of the um, US TAC to um, the um, ISO uh, TC324 on sharing economy standards. Um, 
We uh, are a fairly young um, tag. The uh, ISO TC324 has only been um, up and running for um, just about a year and focuses on um, standards around the sharing economy. And obviously, uh, a few of the speakers uh, already today have, have touched on, on the sharing economy and, and mobility is a big, um, is a big uh, player and, and huge in, in the sharing economy and vice versa. And so, um, you know, this, this tag was um, extremely strategic to, to, to be set up. Um, in, in the first um, year of our existence, we already were able um, at the um, U.S. level with the support of OASIS uh, to build a very strong coalition of uh, members that are uh, helping shape the future of the sharing economy. And, um, you know, Uber, Microsoft, AIG, eBay are just a few of the members in the tag um, that are really actively participating in, um, in, in this um, process. Um, we were already able to take on, um, as a tag, um, leadership positions within all of the um, ISO committees on TC324. Um, and um, even though Japan is the convener um, and leading the TC, um, the U.S. is very much seen as, as a thought leader, um, if only because uh, most of the larger uh, sharing economy players in the world are, are U.S. based. And so we've seen a lot of traction and, and a lot of um, interest in having the, um, the U.S. take on a very prominent role within, within this context. And uh, we, we believe that we're really um, achieving that with the support of, um, of OASIS. Um, we're only seeing um, and expecting this to keep growing and, and for this to become more important um, over the next um, 12 to 24 months, uh, particularly in the context of, of this uh, worldwide pandemic where um, a lot of economies are now more than ever reliant on um, sharing economy companies. Uh, whether it's for deliveries or um, just pure services, this is becoming extremely crucial. So um, in a way, this is coming at a very important point in time. Uh, there are already 19 countries that are participating um, in this effort uh, as active members, and we believe that this will keep growing. And so uh, we're, we're pretty excited for um, what's to come. Uh, we are, um, in terms of the next um, 12 months, um, we're continuing to contribute and refine drafts of the strategic business plan, the terms and principles, and documents around how to operationalize the standards. Um, so that will be the focus of the U.S. TAC for the remainder of 2020. Um, the next uh, meeting uh, at a worldwide level is at the end of June. So we were keeping, uh, we're making progress. And, um, you know, we, we believe that um, hopefully within the next um, 24 months, we should be able to have a, um, a, a first uh, standard in this area. So um, exciting things to come. And, uh, and with the support of OASIS, we're, uh, we're really looking forward to, uh, to the rest of the process. Uh, great. Um, my name is Brett Jordan. I am a co-chair of the Cacao uh, TC for Security Playbooks, and I'm also a board member here at Oasis. And today I would like to talk with you a little bit about the Cacao uh, Security Playbooks and what that is going to do for cybersecurity um, going forward. Um, so the question is, is why do we need these playbooks? Why is this important? So we know that threat actors are advancing, we know that the number of attacks is increasing, and that the time available to respond is, is decreasing and it's becoming harder and harder to respond to scale. Uh, defense is classically uh, very slow, it's very manual, very reactive, and there's a lot of disparate systems that are involved in, in, in classical response through mitigation, remediation, or even in prevention. Um, you also need uh, a lot of different groups involved. You know, long ago you would have, you know, a network engineering team uh, that kind of did everything, or you had an IT group that did everything. Nowadays you have a lot of different groups that maintain the security posture of the organization, and you need to coordinate between them. And so you have to do this response and this coordination, and and there's really no easy way to share the the threat response um, that is that needs to be done. So we have you know, sticks and taxi to share the threat intelligence, 
but we don't currently have a way to share the mitigation remediation response that is needed. Um, so when we look at this, uh, this is a little diagram that we did uh, to kind of help people see, you know, the, the various bits and pieces that are involved. So you, you might have an attack that comes in. It may come in through, you know, an Android exploit and begin to compromise the environment. And as it moves laterally through the organization, when you come to a traditional SOC and you try to go through and do the mitigation or remediation cleanup, there's a lot of different groups that have to be involved. So first you would have the mobile engineering team, then you might go over to desktop engineering team, and then the network physical engineering team because the, the IP cameras were also compromised, going into the server engineering team and application engineering, uh, traditional security and, and threat intelligence teams as they're doing analysis, up back again to the server and web engineering teams, um, and then all the way out to your internet and core uh, teams as they begin to to do the work on the cleanup. And, and there's a lot of bits and pieces that have to be shared, a lot of information that needs to be uh, uh, put together and, and to, to be correlated. So what we're trying to do um, in the Cacao uh, TC, Cacao uh, is, is very cleverly uh, acronymed um, to, to be uh, Cacao as in chocolate. I, I like chocolate, so. But it's the Collaborative Automated Course of Action Operations for Cybersecurity. And this is a standard, um, a taxonomy and ontology for creating and distributing and monitoring playbooks. Um, this allows organizations to document and describe the steps needed to prevent, mitigate, remediate, and monitor responses of threat actors and, uh, and the attacks and the incidents that take place. And so we'll be building um, upon existing uh, technologies and protocols and interfaces that already exist in the ecosystem. Uh, to make this to make this possible, so it's playbooks exist today, and they have existed ever since I was a network engineer of, of very large networks. Um, but they were all uh, documented using very manual methods. Uh, we typically wrote these down um, and put them in a binder on a shelf. Sometimes they would be put into a knowledge base article or put on a wiki, um, and uh, you know they would. You'd go through and you would list out the things that you would need to do. And then when you needed to hand it off to another team, you'd have to manually tell them where you were at in the process and what they needed to do. And so the playbooks, the design that we're looking for is to orchestrate, you know, IT at scale, uh, orchestrate uh, cybersecurity and physical security, um, and, uh, you know, and really help make cyber defense uh, possible. Um, and uh, make it so that you can share this across tools, across organizations, across enclaves in your environment, so that uh, cyber defense uh, can, can work. So in a, a classical uh, industrial response, you might have bits of the playbook that are created by different entities and signed by those organizations. Uh, you could, Apple could produce some stuff, Microsoft might produce some stuff. Um, different enterprises and organizations and banks could potentially look at this combined playbook and sign it and say, yeah, we've tested it, we've verified it. And it could potentially go all the way up, say, like to the FSISAC. And they could say, we've tested all these things. This will solve the response for Fuzzy Panda. And by deploying this playbook, you will be able to mitigate it or remediate it. So this is the new work that we've started um, in uh, OASIS. It is a technical committee uh, for standardization. We are uh, nearing uh, completion of our first uh, committee specification draft. So things are going along very well. We have a very large group. And if you're interested, I would encourage you to, to join and to uh, uh, participate. Thank you.